Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the BH Virtual Event Space. You might recognize her. She's a regular here. Welcome back, Elena <laughs> Blair. Elena, how's it going? It's going great. It's always good to be back with BH. I mean, in person was fun, but at least we can still do this. Yeah. Well, you know, eventually, eventually we'll get there. One of these days, one of these years, we'll we'll eventually get back to that in-person feeling. But for now, this will have to suffice. We'll have to make do with what we have. Pleasure to have you here. Uh, definitely want to say thank you to our sponsors over at Canon for sponsoring this event. So we all know we wouldn't be able to do it with, without great sponsors like Canon. Uh, Elena will be talking about eight family poses that always work. So if you've been having a tough time with the family, can't figure it out, she's going to demystify that today. At least I hope. Yeah. What do you think? You do it? I think so. Yeah. I've been doing this a long time. I think I can demystify it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm going to hand it over to Elena so she can take over and share her presentation with us. Just a reminder to everybody joining us here. First and foremost, thanks for being here. If you do have any questions and you're joining us here on Zoom, you can use the Q&A tab. If you're joining us on Vimeo or Facebook, use the comment section and we'll make sure to get them over to Elena at the end of this webinar. But Elena, thanks again. Ken, and thanks for sponsoring this. I'll see you back in a little while. All right. So this is such a, the, the perfect time of year, I think, to be talking about family poses because this is the busiest time of year for family photographers. In fact, my friends and I are just been kind of lamenting about how busy it is. So it's the perfect time of year to talk about family photography. So I'm going to talk today about eight family poses that always work. It is really important to have poses in your back pocket. And so at the end of our time together today, you will have eight poses that you can go out and try right away. But before I begin, I want to tell you a little bit about who the heck am I? <laughs> Elena, I'm just going to interrupt you real quick, just yep. because if you want, we're seeing just the portion of the keynote. If you hit yep. the play, that'll bring up the full screen. Yeah. And sometimes I like to see my notes, but I actually don't have oh, any. You no, should still good. see the notes. Yep. That's good. Does that yeah. look better? Beautiful. Okay. Let me make sure I got the right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thank Thinking you. about live events. Yeah. So who the heck am I? My name is Elena S. Blair, and I am a lifestyle family and newborn photographer. I have been in business for 12 years, which seems like a lot of years, <laughs> uh, When with the grand scheme that is for our industry, kind of a long time. Um, I'm still very much a working photographer. I do about 100 family photography sessions a year. My biggest year was 180. Uh, so we're busy over here. I also do a lot of newborn photography, and I have a boutique school photography segment of my business. And then, of course, I I am a photographer educator. I reach thousands of photographers online, in person, the whole bit. But at the end of the day, I'm also a mom with a camera. I have four kiddos. I am in the car, personal taxi for these guys all the time. Um, and I'm literally sitting on the floor of my living room right now to get away from my barking dogs. So I am definitely... <laughs> in it with all of you. I am, uh, you know, living life like most of us are, um, just happen to also be a photographer. So my posing system was really born out of frustration. So when I first went into business and started photographing families, I would show up at these sessions and these families would look at me and they'd be like, all right, now what? And I'm like, well, I want to take in. And at that time, we didn't use the word lifestyle as a as a term to describe our photography. So I was like, I want, I want more candid photos. I want my families to look in love and to be connected. Why are my families not just like frolicking through fields and like cuddling all the time? Like, why isn't this working for me? It was so frustrating. I would leave completely exhausted, usually kind of sweaty. It uh, felt like I was a total out of control experience. I didn't, I wasn't confident that I actually had produced the right types of images for a full gallery. It was a really frustrating experience. And I realized that the problem was is that I didn't have the skill necessary to create the images that I wanted to create. I didn't know how to pose. Um, and posing has gained, I'm gonna minimize this guy. Hold on one sec, if I can. Um, well, it's okay. Posing has gained a bad reputation when it comes to the lifestyle genre. And uh, that is because of a really common thing is that most people believe that if they want to create connected images, that they don't want to use the term or the skill of posing because they feel like posing is stiff. They feel like posing is unnatural. And I actually think that most of you who are watching today, if you think of the word pose and you think of the, the, the 
um, emotion that comes to your brain when you use that, when you put that word there, you're probably thinking of stiff, maybe thinking traditional, maybe thinking studio, I don't know, all kinds of different things. And so photographers who wanted to create more connection, more moment driven photography, like I said, in the lifestyle genre, they have become adverse to the term posing. But knowing how to pose is an art form and it is essential. So let me debunk a common myth. And I am going to really quick minimize this so that you can see all my slides. Okay, there we go. Um, I want to debunk a common myth. And that is, there's something that I see happen on social media all the time, and it really drives me crazy. I'll see an experienced photographer post a photo like this one, or like this one, you know, like a moment-driven, connected family photo, and they say something like, oh, swoon, I just love those in-between moments, I just love the candid photos, and that is such a disservice to the new photographer, because it's not true. Any good lifestyle photographer is posing and directing every single thing that is going on in that photograph. And that's not something to be ashamed of. It's something to be proud of. You are the artistic director of your photo shoots and you must know how to pose. You must. It is essential. Essential. So that is something that I like to just put out there that if you are going to be a lifestyle photographer, you are going to have to know how to pose the families. And here's the thing. Family photographers are working with people, with real families. We are not working with models. We're not working with people who know how to pose themselves and make themselves look good. We're working with people who are a little nervous about getting in front of the camera or maybe have never been in front of the camera before. They're expecting you to be an expert and you have to know how to pose to do that. But let me be super clear, my posing is not traditional. So one of the first questions that I get asked when I teach this skill, because I teach it a lot, is, but Elena, not everyone is looking at the camera, or but Elena, you're blowing out someone's head with, um, with a sun flare, or but Elena, I can't see that dad's face. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you here. My posing is not traditional because I have a rule in life and in business and in art. And that is that I focus on connection over perfection. And yeah, I'm out to break some rules and be creative because I am an artist and so are you and you're allowed to do that. So if that's the only thing you take from today's posing webinar, please remember that you're allowed to break some rules sometimes. So my posing is about creating connection before perfection. I actually don't care about perfection. In my opinion, where there's perfection, there's really no story there. It's kind of boring. So I want to create connection. So my posing is about focusing on that. So I want to ask you something really quick. And this is something that really is a game changer for most people when they start to get into this more, um, you know, moment driven type of family photography. I want you to ask yourself, how do you want your work to feel? Notice how I didn't say, how do you want your work to look? I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that photographers make is they're focused so much on color and so much on that perfect pose and so much on all of these rules that they're trying to remember that they lose sight of why they started this whole thing in the first place. And there is no connection there. So instead, think about how you want your work to feel. For me, this is easy. I want my work to feel romantic. I want my work to feel nostalgic. And I want my work to feel authentic. I've been told that my work is messy. I've been told that my work is moody. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I'm going for. So I want you to take a moment, and you don't have to do it right now, but sometime today, jot down three emotions that you want to convey with your work. Think about that feeling. That's going to really change things for you. Now, I do take a money shot at every single shoot. Yes, I know how to pose families in pretty perfect poses. But of course, I'm using light here creatively to kind of change things up because, hey, I'm not like your traditional family photographer. That's never going to happen. But I do take a money shot at every single shoot. I always say this one's for grandma, just in case. Grandma's wondering why no one's looking at the camera. But I just don't show it to the internet because it's not what I want to be attracted for. So I do know how to do that. Really quick, before I go any further in this posing webinar, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to Canon for bringing me here today. Such an honor to be working with Canon now. Um, I really didn't know if that would ever be a thing for me. So it is just such an honor. So thank you, Canon. It is the only gear that I have ever used. 
So let me talk about that for a moment. Let's talk about my gear. So I shoot with two camera bodies at every session. I have a hold fast holder and I have one body on one side and one on the, on the other. This is not an essential thing for family photography, but I've been doing that for about five years and it shaved about 20 minutes off of my session time. And when you're working with families with young kids, time is of the essence. So I actually use a um, DSLR and a mirrorless. I love them both equally. I cannot pick a favorite child. Everyone always asks me to, I will not. Um, so I have the 5D Mark IV and the R5 mirrorless, love them both. Um, on my Mark IV, almost always is my 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens. If I had to choose a setup, and if you said you have to use one camera and one lens for the rest of your life, that would be it. Because that 50 millimeter lens is just so true to life. The color is amazing. It's so beautiful. I love it so much. So I have that on my right side always. And then on my left side is where I have my mirrorless R5. And I usually have, when I'm outdoors, my 85 millimeter 1.2. Um, and when I'm doing newborn shoots, I have my 35 millimeter 1.8 on that body. So I use both bodies at, um, at the same time. Saves so much time not having to switch lenses. So I am a 100% natural light photographer. I know that a lot of uh, you know, artificial light photographers will give me a lot of grief for that. Oh, you just don't want to learn it. All of the things. Everyone has all of the reasons that they think that I am a natural light photographer. And the truth is, is that I have a love affair with golden hour. I will never end that. I always want to seek that golden hour light. It means so much to me. It's a big part of my creativity. Um, when I'm photographing newborns indoor, a big part of my creativity is actually the moodiness that indoor light creates. So I'm a big fan of natural light. Just had to say that. Yes, I do photo shoots on cloudy days. I live in Seattle, Washington. I don't know if I said that earlier. I forgot. Um, I live in Seattle, Washington. We've got lots of cloudy days. And like I said, I kind of like the moody vibe sometimes. So I don't care. And even my newborn work, which is all done indoor, is done with natural light. Thank you, Canon, for making gear that can easily handle a very high ISO. This is a newborn shoot where the ISO was at 4,000. And as you can see, there's not an ounce of grain there. So Canon makes gear that works perfectly for my style. And again, no artificial light. I don't even own a flash. Yep. Going to say that. Professional photographer, no flash here. So how is this webinar going to work? So this is a very tactical webinar. I give lots of inspirational webinars and business webinars and those kinds of things, but this one is actually meant to give you posing systems that you can use right away. I've been teaching the way that I teach posing for nearly 10 years and I know that it works. So I'm gonna show you a pose, I'm gonna show you a picture, and then I'm gonna break it down into a step-by-step -step formula, literally one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna put it into the simplest terms so that you can literally execute it right away. You could go grab your own family and try it out tonight if you want to. My advice is to download this presentation, which I will give you a link to do that at the end and use it as a posing guide and study the formulas I share and put it into practice as soon as possible. When you learn something, the best way to like sol solidify that in your brain is to go out and actually do it. Before we begin, I wanna give you a, a few little things to keep in your mind here. Use these poses as a base. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five. Use that as a base, and then it is your job to do something way better with that pose than what I'm telling you. Your creativity will be far more interesting than what I'm teaching you today. I promise you that. So I want you to use the pose as a base and then make it your own and make it something incredible. Um, uh, the next thing that I want you to know is that I'm going to share camera settings. And I want you to remember that these are simply reference points. Natural light photographers like myself, we're changing our camera settings all the time, kind of constantly. And I know that if you were working indoors with artificial light, that maybe I could give you camera settings and the exact light and the exact angle of the light and all of that. And you could use my camera settings and produce something similar. Most of the time, I think that the where your real creativity shines, where you're able to really take control of your camera is when you learn how to create the camera settings that will suit your artistic style. So like I said, I like to do a lot of sun flare. I have a moodier style. So my camera settings may not translate to what you're doing. Use them as reference points. You might not be able to copy and, and use them exactly the same and produce the same type of photo. Just a little caveat there. You got to get really comfortable talking to your subjects. You have to talk. <laughs> you have to guide and direct. Just like a movie director goes to the set 
and tells everyone where they want them to be and says, I want you to run this way and I want you to dance and I want you to do this. And then of course the actors are who are going to make it into something incredible. That's your job as a photographer is to be that creative artistic director. So you are going to tell the families what to do. And of course their love and connection is gonna make it what it is. So you have to get comfortable talking to your subjects. And the next thing people tell me, my introverts say, but Elena, I am not uh, vocal, I am quiet. That's okay. You will start attracting people who really appreciate that more gentle voice. Yes, I tend to talk a lot. Yes, I have a loud voice. I know that. Everyone that is a photographer, though, you need to get comfortable talking to your subjects. I think you need to get comfortable touching your subjects. Now, I know that we have come out of the pandemic or we're in it, but that's not nearly as intense is when we really couldn't touch anybody. Um, and I don't mean to make anyone uncomfortable ever. Obviously you wanna be very like you know gentle, but sometimes you do have to come and move mom's arm or really kind of adjust her shoulders a little bit or tell the little guy with his hand where to put it. So you kind of have to be comfortable with that as well. Okay, really quick, how do I know my posing system works? So I just wanna like give you, it's not just me who thinks this works. Some of my, um, Posing classes have had up to 52,000 students and 99% of them recommend my posing system. So if you go out and execute these poses, they are going to work. And I'm telling you, these are my eight favorite poses. Here's another thing I want you to remember. Don't get caught up in the details. So I will teach a posing uh, formula and I'll have a student say, but what do you do if there's four kids instead of three? Or what do you do if there's no father? This is one of my single mama parents. Or what do you do if it's the same sex couple? You just switch people out a little bit. Do not get caught up in the details. You are allowed to change things up and any dynamic can be switched. Any um, kid can be swapped, all of that. So don't get too caught up in the details. And yes, the next question that I get is, do these poses work with older kids and teenagers? Yes, they absolutely do. This is a 16 year old, and this is actually one of my assistants and her family and their dynamic is adorable. Um, this is their 16 year old son and I got him right in there snuggling with the family. And the next question you're gonna ask is how do you do that? How do you get teenagers who are willing to do that? Well, this is all that I show to the internet. So I attract families who are close, who are snuggly, who are willing to give each other a big snuggle and a big hug. So yes, these poses work with older kids and teens. Again, don't get caught up in the details. Even if you're seeing children and babies in here, you can swap things out. All right, you ready for some posing, uh, some posing formulas? And here's the thing <laughs> that I loved about in-person events is that I could see faces smiling back at me. And right now I'm literally looking at myself. So I hope that you guys are, that this is resonating and that you are ready to go with these posing formulas. And remember, you can download this afterward so you can get the formulas step-by-step -step and, 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 and you can ask me questions and, and, and they usually post this to YouTube and it'll probably live on Facebook forever. So you can always watch again. Okay. Cause I know that I tend to talk a little fast. I'm working on it. Sorry. Oh, I'm seeing hearts. Okay. Okay. Feeling a little more encouraged. Thank you for those. All right. So let's go with my first formula. I'm going to start with a standing pose to talk to you guys about because a lot of times standing poses feel a little less intimate for families. And so I usually start with standing poses during my photo shoots as well. So what you wanna do is you wanna ask dad to pick up one of the children. And here's a little tip, make sure that he is tummy to tummy with the child. A lot of times when you ask a parent to pick up their kiddo, they like pop them on the hip, like they would, you know, if they were in the grocery store or whatever. So you wanna ask them to put the child tummy to tummy. That little adjustment creates much more connection. Um, one of my rules in posing too, no light. I don't like to be able to see light between my family members. I am a big fan of closeness. Then you want to ask mom to come in and face dad and also direct her to go tummy to tummy with the child in between them. Place her arm on either dad, place her arm on either dad's arm or dad's hip, and then ask her to lean in and rest her head on the child's head. This is where you could modify this. You could ask dad to give her a kiss on the forehead. You could ask them to kiss. You could ask her to kiss the little guy. What usually happens is when you give this direction, they start doing their own thing. Like look how dad's looking at her can't make that up, right? That is like adoration. That's what I'm looking for. 
If there are other children in the family, um, I ask them to run up and give the parents a hug. If one of the kiddos um, ends up on, behind the family, then you just ask them to slide around. There's no need to ask anyone to look at you, but oftentimes kids look at you. And the truth is when kids look at you, they have an authentic expression most times on like parents who have more of the you know stiff smile or whatever. So if one of them looks at you, great, but no need to ask them to look at you. This is a connected pose. Now I'm gonna show you this pose in action um, with other dynamics. So this is this exact same type of direction. Uh, look at that little guy smiling the way that he is, favorite. And um, again, this is how I would do this pose with just one kid. So I'm just trying to give you the different dynamic. And the other thing too, that you will notice is that I want you to maximize a pose. So you can pull back, you can go in, get the pose from all different angles. Here's my settings for this one. This was my Mark IV, 50 millimeter. My ISO is pretty high, it's 2000 because this was actually after sunset. It was like blue hour. As you can see, the sun's kind of just dipping there behind the mountains. Um, F 2.0 and shutter speed is one over 4,000. Little pro tip for you. A lot of people think that when they're having issues with focus that it has to do with their F-stop. It's actually probably a shutter speed issue. Children never stop moving. So I'm a big fan of a super fast shutter speed. Here's the same pose, but with a dog. <laughs> so I wanted to show you again, not to get caught up in the details. This one, the sun was much higher in the sky. I'm using my 50 millimeter again. ISO is 160, um, f-stop is 2.2 and shutter speed is one over 1600. Another thing about my style, I shoot almost exclusively wide open. I really never stopped down more than two point to 2.5. So just kind of my thing. It's kind of a, it's a stylistic choice. Take it or leave it. You get to make yours what you want to make yours. And then I wanted to show this pose with teenagers. So the girl on the left was um, 18 and the girl on the right is 20. Same pose. There's just not a baby anymore because now we have teenagers. My point being that, look, it's the exact same pose, just with different family dynamics. My shutter speed here is also very fast, 400 ISO 300 um, F 2.0. All right. Here is my next formula. This is a great pose for transitions. When you're working with small kids, you have to give them time and uh, space to move. I don't know any of you that are here that are, are family photographers know this. Kids get wiggly. And I am I really utilize my locations knowing the different spots that I want to be at, but I don't miss an opportunity to create a photograph. And so during the transitions, I like to be very direct about how I want them to walk to the next spot. I'm telling you, my work looks very candid. I'm literally telling everyone like down to their fingers what I want them to do. So with this formula, what I like to do is keep one or two of the kiddos behind with me. This is great for older kids, especially those kids that have a lot of energy. This guy that I kept behind could not sit still. And then I asked the rest of the family to hold hands and walk away from me. Then I direct the kiddo that I kept behind to walk toward the family or if they need to, to skip or run, to catch up. And then I direct mom or one of the family members to reach her hand out to the child joining them. It creates this Mo this beautiful movement, it creates a little bit more um, interest with that hand, that connection point is the hand, and it's just like this cinematic photograph, if you will. Here it is with a much larger family. Um, in this case, the mom is reaching out to that little girl that's skipping towards her. As you can see, her hair is flying up, and this is one of their adult children. This is a modern family, blended family that the one in the floral there is his daughter who is um, was 21 years old. And then these are the three kiddos that they've had together. So again, just showing that these can be used with any dynamic and any age. ISO 500, F 2.8. This was with my Mark, Mark, Mark IV again, 50 millimeter. Told you, my favorite lens. And um, one over 5,000. These are, they're moving. I wanted to make sure that I was able to freeze that. Here is the same uh, type of direction. But in this case, when mom, uh, the, when I said reach back for your sister, the little boy did it, <laughs> which I love. I love when they make it their own. So um, this was with my R5, 85 millimeter. ISO was a thousand. It was a pretty cloudy day. Um, F 2.8 shutter speed one over 3,200. Okay. Um, this formula is a, one of my favorites, again, for kiddos that need a little more playfulness, that are needing to be entertained a little bit more. <laughs> so I tell the kiddos that we're going to play a game. They get really excited. I ask them to stand right next to each other and wait. And that's the good news is that when they're standing next to me, I'm snapping photographs when they're waiting for their parents. I'm like, okay, you're going to stand there and you're going to wait. And I take some photos of them together. Then I ask the parents to get behind them. 
And I say, on the count of three, mom and dad, you are going to get you. No picking, no peeking. And then I say, one, two, three. And the parents come up from behind them and wrap them up. Now, I actually usually direct the parents not to look at me, but sometimes it works when they look at me. And look at the joy in these kiddos' faces. Here is that exact same direction. And again, the, the parents looked at me, but their faces are genuine. I'm cool with everyone looking at the camera as long as they don't look like they're super stiff and unnatural. So look, their faces are genuine because they're actually having fun. And that's what I always say. If you see a kid smiling at one of my photo shoots, it's because they were actually happy, not because I made them smile. So this is ISO, um, this is with my 50 millimeter again, ISO 160, F2.2, shutter speed one over 1600. This is the same direction. And um, this is um, ISO 3200, F2.5, shutter speed 125. And that one I would have liked to, the shutter speed to have been a little bit faster. We were in a dark forest in this photograph. All right. This is also one of my favorite. I'm trying to give you, um, def, by the way, I'm a little caveat here. I'm trying to give you poses that work well with kids who are hard to work with because that can be one of the hardest things as a family photographer. So I'm giving you my favorites for that. So this is a good one for wiggly kids as well. Kids who might be a little reluctant to be sitting on their parents' lap because all they want to do is play. So I ask dad to sit on the ground comfortably first. Anytime I do a seated pose, I ask dad to sit down first. Why? Because sometimes dad sitting on the ground is a little weird. They are a little more stiff and um, sitting down can be uncomfortable for them. And you don't want them to look uncomfortable. So I say, dad, you sit down first and sit comfortably. I don't care how your legs are, whatever, just sit down. Then I ask mom to sit right beside him as close as she can. And I say hips touching. A lot of times you tell people to sit down and they sit like a foot apart from each other. That's not going to create a connected pose. So I tell them to have their hips touching and I ask them to get as close as possible. Then I place the children on their laps. I remind the parents not to put a child's head in front of their face. When you are doing a seated pose, that is, they will put that kid right in front of their face. They don't mean to, but they do that a lot. So you want to remind them not to. Then I direct the parents to tickle the children gently gently being the key word there. I've had some parents go a little overboard with this. I tell them to look at the children while they are tickling them. This always creates the super fun image where the kids are hilarious, they're laughing, um, and it's always a good time. And that's my, my goal is for these kids to remember the experience as a good time so that they're like all in when they come back the next year. Here is a similar pose with older kiddos or with one younger kid, one older kid. Um, this is with my 50 millimeter 5D Mark IV, ISO 400, F2.5, shutter speed one over 3200. This is the same pose. And what I love, why I'm showing, why I wanted to share this one is that it's a little quieter, right? Like this family kind of didn't get as wild with their tickling and it just came out so cute and so connected. Um, 50 millimeter again, ISO 250, 2.5, one over 2000. Notice my super fast shutter speed. That is my key to a sharp, um, to everyone being in focus. And some of these I'm realizing the quality is a little bit lower now that I made it big, but anyway, that is my, um, my key. All right, formula. I would say that this is my pose that I get asked to replicate the most at family photo shoots. When people, ha people have seen this in my portfolio and the moms will say, can we do the one where I'm laying down? They love it. I don't know what it is about it. I think that it makes mom feel adored, which she deserves. Um, but anyway, just thought I'd say that. So um, I asked dad again to sit down first, always ask dad to sit down first and make sure he's comfortable. This guy was really, was doing the crisscross applesauce really well. Some dads got to kick their legs up. And I direct mom to lay on the ground with her head in his lap and her legs facing out to the side, bending at the knees. Another little tip here, posing tip that I didn't put in the formula is you want to make sure that she keeps her chin up. You don't want to give anyone a false double chin. So you just ask her, direct her to bring her chin up. Trust me by these little details make a big difference on how the photo looks and how the, the families feel about how it looks afterward. Place one of the children on dad's lap place the other child on mom's lap, straddling her waist, and then direct mom, the child on mom's lap to come in and give mama a kiss. Sometimes they give a kiss, sometimes they just snuggle, but you want to direct them to get a little closer. I asked dad not to look at me during this pose. I asked him to look at one of the kids or to look at mom. If there are additional children, I just place them next to dad on either side. So you would have one like sort of behind mom next to dad, another one, maybe two on dad's lap. I just sort of pile the kids on. Here is the exact same pose, as you can see. And this one, what I love, again, they take it and they make it their own is that dad started to 
um, clear the little one's hair from her face, just making it so much more connected and tender. Uh, 50 millimeter again, ISO 400, um, F2.2, shutter speed one over 640. Here is this pose again, and I wanted to show this different angle because my main one of my main things when posing is that I want to maximize each pose, meaning that I want to take as many photographs in that pose as I can from different angles, because working with kids, time is of the essence, they will lose interest in you eventually, so that's why I do that. Um, and so this is my um, 50 millimeter again, ISO 800, 2.0, shutter speed 1 over 5000. All right. So this is another um, more cinematic, I don't know if I'm using that word correctly, but I'm gonna use it today, uh, movement pose. And um, I love it. I do this at almost every session. And what I ask mom and dad to do is stand next to each other. And I say, this is when I take photos of mom and dad by themselves. I'll do that really quick, but I love to include the whole family dynamic as well. So I invite them to hug each other. And if you feel that they are comfortable enough, I'll ask them to give each other a kiss. And um, what I do, this is one of my favorite posing directions when I ask families, when I ask them to pose is I say, I want you to give each other the kitchen hug. And they're like the kitchen hug. And I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you just got home from work. Your beautiful partner is in your kitchen and you come in and you give them a big hug and they get it. For some reason, if you try that out at your next shoot, that little piece of direction, they understand. They're like, oh yeah, I know about that. So anyways, I ask them to give each other an embrace of some sort. I try to keep the kiddos back with me at this point. I say, it's mom and dad's turn. And then as soon as I've taken the photograph of mom and dad, I back up and I ask the kids to walk up or run towards mom and dad. Um, I ask them to, you know, walk in that direction. And I remind them not to get too far so that they remain in the frame. And this just creates this, like I said, I like romance. Romantic is one of my favorite, the, you know, emotions that I'm trying to convey with my work. And it gives that real romantic feel, kind of makes mom and dad be the spotlight, but it just shows this beautiful family dynamic that they have. And I do this with older kids as well. So this was with my R5, 85 millimeter, ISO 400, F2.5, shutter speed one over 1600. And as you can see, these kids are a little older. So they're kind of that the one on the right, he's like 12. He's making a little snarky face like, oh gosh, mom and dad are kissing. But I uh, do it anyway, <laughs> because I love it. And what I also find is that families blow these ones up. I've, this is one of the ones that is, gets purchased and blown up the most. And here it is again, um, this time when I was uh, directing mom and dad, the little kids started um, hugging, <laughs> as you can see. So like I said, every family makes it into their own amazingness. Um, this is my 5D, a 50 millimeter, 400, F2.2, shutter speed, one over 1600. So here is a, my classic sitting pose. Um, I showed you the one where I make them be silly and where I have them tickle, but this is my more classic sitting pose. I do this at every single session, regardless of the ages. Um, and I'm going to break it down for you. And again, I'm showing you different angles, how I capture these poses at different angles, because I want you to remember that, that when you do a pose, it's not an opportunity for one click. It's an opportunity to move around. You move your body <laughs> and you get that pose at as many different angles as you can. So I asked dad to sit on the ground again. I have him be the one who sits down first and I ask him to sit comfortably. Then I ask mom to sit right next to dad so that their hips are touching. No light coming between the parents. I love that piece of direction for myself is that I remember that if I see a little bit of light, then I'm reminded to tell the family to get a little closer. I ask one of the children to sit on the mother's lap. And in this case, there was only one kiddo. And then I instruct dad to put his left arm where we're, if she was sitting on his left side. So if she's sitting on his right, change it. But on this one, she's sitting on his left side. So I instruct dad to put his arm around her back. And then I ask her to lean back on dad. I want her sort of leaning on him. And I also, this puts mom at a flattering angle. She's a little bit more turned towards, um, angled towards the camera that way. If there are other kiddos, I pile them on dad's lap. And now the direction that I give in this pose is to wrap each other up and snuggle. When you say, okay, now wrap up your family. I'll tell the dad, wrap up your beautiful family or mom, put your arms around your baby. They understand. That's a, that's a direction that they get. They know what I'm going for. 
Um, here it is with three kiddos. And you can see this one, when I asked them to wrap up, mom kind of hunched forward a little bit, but I still loved it so much. Um, and yes, the little one's face got in front a little bit. Dad's looking down and it just loved it anyway. So uh, same exact direction, extra kids piled them on. So ISO 200, F 2.0, shutter speed one over 800. Um, this is my 5D 50 millimeter ISO 200 F 2.2 shutter speed one over 800. As you can see, um, this one mom stayed at that angle and the other kiddos are there and they're wrapping them up and it's just so much love and connection. All right. I'm going to give my final instruction here. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, family poses too, because I feel like it's just kind of fun and laid back and it kind of gives a little more interest to a standing pose. But I asked mom to pick up one of the kiddos. You notice that I like them to pick the kids up if they can. I asked dad to, um, I asked dad to pick up one of the kids or put one of the kids on his shoulders. This pose works with or without a kiddo on the shoulders. I make sure the parents are standing super close together so that you can't see any light coming through their bodies. Notice the theme here. And I asked mom and dad to look at each other. And if they feel, if you think they're comfortable to give each other a kiss, um, or you can ask them to look at the children. You just don't want them looking at you in this case, if you can avoid it. If there's a third kiddo, I will have that kid stand in front of the parents. And I'm going to show you a fun variation for this. I can also sometimes ask the kiddo to hold one of the parent's hands and extend out their arm. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is this exact same pose, but the kid's not on the shoulders. Um, mama's holding the kid. We didn't put the other one in the shoulders. And you see how she's kind of pulling on dad like that. It just creates a little bit of length. It creates like a more fun movement pose. Um, this is a 50 millimeter thousand or ISO 800 F 2.5 shutter speed one over 1600. And here is the same pose. This time, mom and dad weren't looking at each other. Mom was looking over at the kiddo. And this is 50 millimeters, ISO 100, F 2.5, shutter speed, one over 2,500. Now, one thing I want you to remember is to capture every moment in between. So if you are a lifestyle photographer and you're photographing families, things move really quickly. Uh, my sessions are usually about an hour long. And as we're transitioning, when I'm photographing, so in this one, I was photographing dad with the boys. They have twin boys, this family. And I turned around and I saw this and just snapped it really quick. Um, this is one of my favorite photos that I took last year. <laughs> and it was an in-between, it was me actually just paying attention. So yes, even though I'm saying that posing and directing is important, I want you to pay attention to that. Remember that in-between moments, things like this can happen. So do not miss those opportunities. Be ready. So if you want to download this posing guide, you can get um, the whole thing so that you can go. I want you to like print it out, put it on your phone. I don't care. And go try to execute these poses. So it's bit.ly forward slash capital ESB underscore eight underscore poses. And also if you are on Instagram, I spend a lot of time there. I answer every single direct message that I get. So Elena S. Blair underscore photography, please go over, come over, say hello. I love my BNH family. I love when I get new uh, community from BNH because my BNH community has been so solid for the past however many years I've been working with them. So please come over and say hello. All right. Anyone have, I'm happy to answer questions. I feel like I got through that about what we wanted 40 minutes for that part of the talk. You, um, you were, you were like in and out. <laughs> he, well, Eric, Eric had said 40 minutes and then you need to have time for questions. I was like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> so I will, I will let everybody know. Um, and, and we'll add this as well to the Facebook as well as Vimeo. Um, I went ahead and I just, I wrote into the chat the actual website as well. So if you're like me, if you're like me and you're just atrocious at remembering things or just, totally. you know, being able to phonetically write it, yes. it's easier well, that I, way. I, yes. Thank you for doing that. I could have had my team do that as well, but thank you. <laughs> that's, that's what we're here to do. We're here to make things more seamless. So I do know that there's a ton of people out here and they're watching. And so, so far I've got one question that's come in. So to everybody else who's watching, because I know there's a lot of you, I check on these things. I check who's watching where, and I can see everybody. You may not see me, but I see you. So get those oh, questions, <laughs> get those questions in because that's what Elena is here to do. And she's got a ton of great information. I know because we've spoken to Elena in the past and she always brings tons of great stuff. So let's start it and uh, get started with Larry. He said, uh, with, an aperture at two-ish. How do you keep everyone in focus? 
isn't the depth of field super short? Yes, Larry, that is one of the questions that I get asked the most. So I'm gonna tell you a few things about that. Um, my decision to shoot wide open is a very intentional one. And it's that I'm gonna go like way back to my the film days of photography where um, photography wasn't this like crisp, like crisper than life thing in those days. And film is actually a little bit soft and it is um, almost like, you know, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's just a little more soft. It's like this more, it's an artistic choice for me. I don't want, I want what I'm, what I want and focus in focus, but I want there to be that background that is really just nice and soft. And I actually feel like it's really nice for skin tones as well. So that's my thing about why I do that. Um, the uh, what depth of field, yes, you're right. It is an exposure triangle. There's a depth of, depth of field thing you have to think about. Most of my families are in the same focal plane. As if you notice my work here, and I can go to like just a group shot here, everyone is in a line essentially. So they are all going to be in focus. Now, sometimes it's intentional that I want just, I'm gonna go to another one here. I wanted mom to be the focus here. I'm okay with these guys being blurry. I know that that is a stylistic choice. I know some people are, I'm going to get all the criticism about that. Don't worry. I don't care. I've been doing this for 15 years. I, I, I do this on purpose. Here's the other thing. If you're having focus issues, it probably has to do with your shutter speed. So when I'm looking, like everyone's in focus here, when I'm looking at somebody's um, work and they're telling me I'm having major focus issues, their shutter speed's at like 150, 200. And it's because they're afraid to push their ISO up. Well, Canon makes gear that you can push your ISO like to the moon and you won't see any blur or any, um, any noise. Uh, and so they're afraid to push their ISO up. And so they have this super show, slow shutter speed. Families don't stop moving. They literally don't. Even when they're still, somebody is wiggling around and moving. You need a fast shutter speed. So I would tell you that if you're having focus issues, it's probably a shutter speed issue. Awesome. Now I, I did I did get some people who see I already I already screwed this all up. I tried to make this simpler and I just completely messed everybody up. So <laughs> apologies, everybody. The Bitly link uh, wasn't working. That's because I accidentally. I, I made the last word poses in capitals. Those are supposed to be under, uh, sorry, lowercase, not underscore, underscore is before it. I, re, I re-put it back in. I re-put okay. it back in and we'll send it back out. And I made sure it worked. And so I, I, I got it this time. If, if not, just get Derek back here and just completely yeah. erase me from existence. And you know what? I was wondering where Derek was today, Scott. I was wondering where Derek was, but I'm wondering where Derek is too. Derek, if you're out there, come, <laughs> come find you, Derek. us. <laughs> so, so that is, uh, that is, uh, the answer to that. Um, now see, now we've got a ton of questions. I love this. Great. Yay, I'm my glad, favorite. I'm glad everybody's in here. Um, <laughs> so I saw this one come in. Where did it go? There we go. There it is. Davina asked, how do you connect and engage little ones like babies and toddlers? Yes. Okay. So I have a really quick tip for you. Um, babies are most comfortable in their parents' arms. And one of the things that a lot of photographers do that I think is a mistake, I don't like the word mistake, but it's, it's a disservice to yourself because you're going to create a cranky kid is they take the babies out of the parents' arms. I want to get the baby over here by themselves. I want to do this. I want to do that. And that's just going to create an unhappy kid. Now, eventually they do relax and they'll probably venture off away from their parents. But um, for the most part, my babies stay very close to their families the entire time. So that would be my biggest take my, if you if, to try and do this quickly. The other thing is that I, um, I have, and I know that this is going to sound kind of, I don't know what the right word is trite or like, you know, you're like, give me a concrete tip, Elena, you're a teacher, but um, I have a genuine love and interest in the people that I'm photographing. And I think that the people who can sense whether you're not being real or not the most are children. So I get down on my knees. I am engaging with them. I'm asking them how, like what I have, I do a big intake form. So I know a lot about the family already. I'm like, well, you're in kindergarten this year. What's your teacher's name? You know, I start to really engage them. And so I would say, just take genuine interest in these kiddos and they will, kids are so giving with their personalities if they unfold in front of you. So that would be my, those would be my tips. <laughs> to try awesome. And yeah. Awesome. Now, AW, AW hit this on the head. This is something that I was going to ask you if nobody else asked, but they got it. So 
how do you help families feel comfortable with you from the start? I think that's something everybody, especially in the beginning, struggles with and is so hard to sort of, you know, figure out. Absolutely. So it is 100%. I, it's funny because I feel like there's so many genres in our industry that are way more like uh, you know, shiny, right? Like, oh, if you do weddings, like you're going to maybe be on Martha Stewart. And if you do, if you photograph fashion models, like you're going to be on the cover of a magazine, like all that stuff, right? Yes, it's true. That's kind of cool. But those are models and brides, right? These are people who are like, they're the, a bride is like ready to have her photograph taken. And a model is like a model. It's their job. When you're photographing families, you're photographing real people with real dynamics who are probably super nervous Dad's not happy about being there most times. It's a tough dynamic. So I understand why this is a question that I get asked a lot. And here are a few things that will set you up for success. One, you should do some sort of questionnaire or intake form. And the question that I ask, um, every one of us that does lifestyle photography um, has a different question that they ask that really is their magic question. And what I say, I have, you know, I ask all the things I say, what are the kids' names? I ask, I say, what are things that you want me to know about your children? And this is when someone will say like, oh, well, Jessica's a little bit, um, you know, she's, she doesn't like to listen to authority. Like I've had parents say that like, Jessica doesn't like to listen to authority. So like, she's not going to want to follow the rules. You know, they'll, they'll tell you because they want this to be a successful photo shoot. So that's one thing I ask what they want me to know about each kid. The next thing that I say is, okay, I leave a big blank space in my form. It's an online form. And I say, tell me about your family. And I say, this is the time to write me a love letter about your family. I want to know everything. And this is where you really get the feel for the dynamic. I, they, mothers, no one ever asked them to do that. And so this is when, and it's usually the moms, I'm sorry that I'm being gender specific, but it is usually the moms that fill out my forms. And this is when they tell you we're, you know, we're going through this right now and it's really hard, or we've just made it through this thing, or we're, um, we've just moved and we have all these new schools and everyone's a little stressed out, whatever, or just simply we are a close lovey-dovey family. They will tell you a love story about their family. So I already know what their vibe is a little bit before I've met them. Then when I get there, I don't take, uh, don't put my camera up to my face. I have them hanging on, on my hips. I don't take, put it up to my face until I've gotten down on my knees and introduce myself to every single kid. I say hi to the baby. I high five dad. I'm like, we got this. We're going to make it really quick. And that's the next thing you have to be relatable. You, I am exhausted at the end of my sessions. I'm just going to be real. I give a lot of my own energy to these sessions because I allow myself to like Annie Leibovitz says, she allows herself to fall in love with her clients. I do too. I will try genuinely hard to connect with them as human beings to make them comfortable. And then the next thing is that that talking piece that I said, you have to talk to them. I talk constantly. You're doing great, mom. Don't look at me. Look at dad. Look, oh my gosh, your family is so beautiful. The kids over here throwing up. I'm like, it's okay. It's totally normal. This happens sometimes. Like you're just making everyone feel comfortable the whole time. So you have to be the expert. And that's where posing is a game changer because there's so many dynamics, so many weird things happening that if you can say, stand like this, do this, blah, 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 and get those things in place, then the other variables are things that you can deal with. If you don't know how to pose and you can't connect with the family, well, then it's kind of all over the place, right? So that's where posing really helps with this piece as well. Sorry, Excellent. that was a long answer, but. <laughs> no, no, we've, we've got time and it's a great answer. And so thank you. Um, Nicole asked a question that I think kind of plays a little bit off of that. Um, said, thank you first and foremost for the reminder about focus being a creative choice. Um, do you have moms? And I'm going to add on to this or dads because I think I'm one of these dads who are hypercritical of themselves. Uh, how do you handle that? I heard you about lifting mom's chin in the laying down position, but do you take consideration for this with other poses? Of course. So here's a few things. Um, I'm always thinking about mom first. And I, and I obviously, I have same sex couples all the time. I have single moms. I've had single dads. So I'm just being really general right now, just in the interest of time. Um, but I, I am focusing a little bit first on mom when I'm looking at the how people are arranged. And that's because she never gets celebrated. Usually she's the photographer most times. And I just really want to make her feel comfortable. So I am thinking about her angles. I often like that one that I was talking about where mom's sitting on dad. There's a reason that I don't put mom square. It's just, they do get hypercritical. So I like to have 
her at a little bit of an angle like this. I am always paying attention to false double chins. And I say false because a woman without a double chin that's like this will get a double chin. So I always make sure that their chin is up. So those are two little things. But here's my, here's my real trick. Here's my real trick. When somebody is looking at a photograph that's perfect and where everyone is looking at the camera and where everything is really stiff and again, perfect. Like we've all seen that. I mean, once in a while, I feel like, oh, okay, I create a pretty, like, where's that money shot that I used as an example here? Like, you know, like, okay, boring. There's like, look at their smiles are like fake and whatever. It's fine. What happens when a mom or a family sees this is that what they do is they see. I don't want them to see. They see things. Oh, I shouldn't have done that with my hair. Maybe I shouldn't have picked that dress. My arm looks big, blah, blah. They start picking it apart. Now, when you give them a photograph where they feel something, they don't see anything and they love the photograph no matter what. So if you can create a feeling for your clients instead of that like stiff, boring portrait, they are not as critical and they are more happy connection creates client satisfaction. And it also creates satisfaction for you because you felt something when you created that. But like in this photo, mom's not going to talk, think about what she's wearing here. All she, I mean, can't you feel it right? Like all I can feel in this photo is that embrace and the love that she has for her family. And he is like looking down, looking over at his family. It's love and connection. So if you can create a feeling over that stiff and boring, boring portrait, you will have way less criticism from the parents. Awesome. Awesome. Now we did get a question in regards to single moms or mm -hmm. for that case could be single dads as well. Single mm -hmm. parents in general, how do you handle a single parent with say mm -hmm. three boys or a family that has a little four-year-old and a preteen? So I used to be a single parent. <laughs> so single parents, and we know what that's like. It, you, you have been to a you're in a club at, after that. And so I have a lot of single parents actually, because once I um, started uh, advertising. I'm, I'm remarried now, so I'm not technically a single parent anymore. But once I started talking about that, I, you, you start attracting what you talk about. Anyway, I digress. But this is one of my single mamas. And um, I, again, do not get caught up in the details. I would pose exactly the same just without her husband. He's out of here. So it's not it's not that complicated. I think that you're kind of probably getting caught up in the details thinking about that. If this were just dad, I would pose just dad the same. Like I would just take the other parent out simple as that and focus on their connection with those kiddos. So there's, there's really not any, anything else to say other than just do not get too caught up in the details. Awesome. Now I've got to, I've, I've got to throw him under the bus because either he did it to get the reaction or to get the actual answer, but Eric's watching on Facebook <laughs> and wanted to know how do you deal with overbearing parents? I.e. John, give me a natural smile. <laughs> actually that thanks Eric uh, so glad that you're here actually saying that but it's a very common problem I um, I don't like to, yeah it's a problem where you have the you have the mom or the dad over your shoulder so there's a few ways to set yourself up for success in this aspect for one in that questionnaire in my contract I explain I am the artistic director. I no cameras allowed, by the way. One, oh my gosh, one that'll happen to me one time, and you'll make sure to put that in your contract. When like dad's like, I am a hobbyist photographer, and he shows up with <laughs> the DSLR, you're like, oh god. So no cameras allowed because they'll start doing directing. No iPhones either. I, I don't allow iPhone photos during my shoots. And then I explain really one of the best. Um, and this, like, uh, this was opposing class. I wasn't getting into the business side of things, but one of the ways that you really set yourself and your clients up for success is a lot of pre-session education. And so I tell them like there, I do this, I have a welcome site and it's like how to prepare, how to prepare your children. And it, in that part, what do I do if my child's unruly? What do I do if my child doesn't smile? And I explain to them, we're not trying to get everyone looking at the camera. You hired me for the portfolio you've seen. So allow me to be the creative director in this photo shoot. Um, if it's happening during the shoot, I am not afraid to say, it's okay, I got this, let me handle it. I'm totally uh, okay doing that. I know that a newer photographer may not feel comfortable doing that, but I'm okay doing it. The other thing too, is that sometimes with older kids that are comfortable with me, I'll kind of pull them aside away from the family for those headshots. Cause I take, um, at every session, I take a headshot of every kiddo it's really important to me to get a photograph of a kid. And like this one, for example, she had the, the really busy family, these two siblings that are really outgoing and she happened to be the more quiet one. She's the middle child. I have a really quiet middle child. So I kind of understood what that was like. So I pulled her away a little bit and gave her like a lot of attention. I had her like twirling and moving and that helped um, everyone help the family to stop bugging her because <laughs> they were, they were like, 
behind me and it allowed her to open up. So if the, if the dad or the parents are doing that, it's okay as long as the kid's comfortable to kind of step like two or three feet away to take those photos. Awesome. Mm. That's, that's a middle child syndrome. They're, they're stuck in the middle. I know. know? I have, I have one. I have a really quiet middle child and I'm like, Oh, I made a middle child. (laughs) I was lucky. I was, I was the last one. I was the baby. I got. (laughs) I'm the youngest of six. So. Oh boy. Yeah. God bless. <laughs> now, Sharon, Sharon asked the question that I think a lot of people want to know, and maybe there's no right answer to it, but this is probably more of an opinion piece. Do you notice a big difference between using something like the Mark IV versus the R5? It's a great question. So um, I, I love the Mark IV. I have, I, I just have this DSLR, you know, thing where I, I, I was thinking I wanted to get a second. Um, so I, I'm going to give the whole backstory. I was using my Mark III and my Mark IV simultaneously, and um, it was time for an upgrade. It was getting to the point where I felt like my Mark IV was significantly higher quality and color and stuff. The editing was getting a little bit of an issue for my editors because the Mark III just wasn't doing what the Mark IV was doing. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go get a second Mark IV. And I go into my local camera store. I, my local camera store um, in Seattle is Glazers. And I, I went in and I was like, you know, everyone's raving about this R5. Like, let me, let me just put it on. Let me just slap a lens on and play with it for a second. And I was like, blown away. <laughs> the the R5 is such an incredible machine. I mean, it's just kind of bananas, like how amazing the focus is and the color is spot on. Um, so I was just like, yeah, sold. I'm going to get that. I want to, I want to work with two. I love them both equally. I can't pick a favorite child. Like I have different reasons to love them both. Um, so I just love using them together. That would be that would just be my my two cents there. I do think, um, you know, when I, when people are talking about upgrading and they're on a more of a crop sensor and they really want to take it, take it to the next level, they're really doing a big upgrade. I have been recommending go going to the mirrorless, just because I think that there are some things about it that are like just bananas. And um, but both are pretty incredible. There isn't a 35 millimeter like a luxury an L 35 millimeter or I guess what is it for the R five yet. And I'm just like waiting for that because I think that'll be like the perfect combo. That's it. And then it, and then it, the the answer completely changes. Yeah. That's (laughs) the thing about, you know, here's the other thing I'll say about, about camera gear. And I, I only use Canon. I've never used anything else, which is why I'm so grateful that they, that I'm part of their program now, but, um, is that you have to try the lenses for yourself. So my, uh, on my DSLR, um, the 85 for that one, people love it. The, the, um, I think it's a 1.285. And I was like, all right, well, everyone loves this lens. I'm going to try it. But I luckily I rented it first and I did not like it for me. It did not work well for me. And then this is a long time ago. This is probably like 10 years ago when I was upgrading lenses. And then I put that L50, uh, the 1.2 L50 millimeter on there, which people don't rave about as much as the 85. And I was obsessed. And that is still my favorite combo. So you, my, my advice would be to go in and try it at b and like set, they're so good about letting you try their camera, their lenses or rent it for a shoot to see how you feel. Because we all have, different creative expression, but thank goodness. Thank goodness. We're not all the same. Right. So it is, that's why the camera setting thing, I was like, I I will always share my camera settings, but you definitely need to go out and like play with it yourself. Definitely. Definitely. Second that come into the store, try it out. We want to see you. We're, 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 we're waiting on our, on our hands. (laughs) I know. And you know, it's like, I know online ordering is, is cool and all, and it's pretty amazing that we can do that. But when it comes to camera gear, like this is a big investment, go try it out. And b store is like a mall for camera, for photographers. Definitely. It's huge. So and it's you like- can, you can always still buy it and ship it to yourself. You don't have to buy it in the store. You can, you can, if you want to walk away with it, but if you just want to come in and test it out and try it and then ship it to yourself, we're cool with that too. Yeah. Um, get both so, so let's, 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 bring it to a close with this question. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit off topic, but kind of plays into it a little bit. I know you'll be able to field it. So Sally wants to know what kind of package do you present to your clients from which they can make their final selections? Such a good question. So this is where I'm not like the other girls. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of, uh, you know, I, when I've, I've been teaching about this stuff for a long time and people really like to push in-person sales and packages and all of that, right? Well, that's not how I do things. My um, ideal client is a busy mom. She has a job usually, and she can't do that. She's not, she doesn't want to do that. So I'm all inclusive. 
I charge, um, I can, I'll tell you exactly what I charge. I charge $1,400 for the digital files that, that, that I have edited in color and black and white, or that my editors edit. I do have editors. And then we give everyone an album. So every single client gets an album. That's, we say that it's complimentary and part of their package. I have families who I've been photographing now like eight years in a row or more. And they say that those albums are just kind of lined up and they, they love them so much. And then the other thing too, knowing who your ideal client is really important. My ideal client does not want to design the album. So we handle all of the design. They don't even have a um, say in what photos go into the album. So oh. super simple. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> Love it. Easy. Wrap it up with a bow and you're done. Right. That's Excellent. right. Excellent. Well, I want to thank Elena first and foremost for being here. Every time you come here, you give a ton of information, which you know, I know, I know you mentioned you're, 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 you're posting up the, uh, the, the poses on the bit.ly site and yeah. it'll be available for replay on your side. You can check it out on our site, also Vimeo or Facebook. You can rewatch it because stuff like this, it doesn't, it doesn't always seep all in the first yeah. time. Sometimes you got to rewatch it. You got to dissect it. You got to come back to it and really be able to digest it all. So definitely employee folks, if you're out there, if you've got the time, do it. I'm sure that yeah. you'll pick something up that maybe you missed. So definitely get with that. Um, Cass yeah. asked, how can you watch the presentation again? You can go to vimeo.com slash BH event space or Facebook BH event space. We're on there. Um, Elena, you, you can definitely shout out your, your site, your Instagram, where people can yep. find you. Yeah, I'll de definitely make sure to share it on my Facebook and Instagram as well. But Elena S. Blair underscore photography is my Instagram. I spend a lot of time there. So we'll reshare there. And one thing to keep in mind too, folks, is that eight poses is a lot. Like during a family photo shoot, you really, you don't have to do a million poses. So if this, just take two of these and grab a family and give it a try. And that'll be your stepping stone into getting, you know, more comfortable with the posing. So. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Elena, for being here. Thank you, as always, to our sponsors over at Canon. We really greatly appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who joined us, whether you just watched or you asked a question. We really appreciate it. That's what we're here to do. But that's all the time we have for now. This has been another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time.